Paul Petzold. Born in 1908, Paul Petzold faced difficult times as a child. His family lost its Iowa farm and moved to Twin Falls, Idaho, when Paul was 11. He began his climbing career in the rock bluffs overlooking the Snake River near Twin Falls. At 16, he climbed the Grand Teton with a friend. They were only the fourth party to make the ascent. The adventure led him to other climbs in North and South America, Europe, and Asia. Guiding tourists in the Tetons, he developed new techniques for safe climbing, many of which he refined during his service with the 10th Mountain Division in World War II. In 1961, Petzold launched a climbing school in Lander, Wyoming. At about the same time, he testified in favor of the Wilderness Act, which became federal law in 1964. The creation of the wilderness system fueled a growing interest in the American backcountry. Thousands of people flocked to the wilderness with great enthusiasm and remarkably little training. Petzold saw both the interest and the lack of experience and decided to open a school of his own. The National Outdoor Leadership School opened for business in Lander in the summer of 1965. The classes spent a month in the Wind River Range, backpacking, climbing, fishing, and botanizing. Petzold and his colleagues emphasized the need to minimize the impact of wilderness activities. The basic thing to remember is to camp and pass through an area and leave no trace of your being there, he told the students. The school and its charismatic leader rapidly gained an international reputation, more than 75,000 people have been through Knowles courses, learning backcountry techniques and, at the same time, a reverence for the backcountry itself. Not satisfied with this contribution to ethical outdoor recreation, Petzold launched an even broader program, the Wilderness Education Association. Beginning in 1977, the association built a curriculum that stresses low-impact use of the backcountry. In 1984, at the age of 86, Petzold climbed to the moraine of Middle Teton Glacier at an altitude of 11,000 feet on the Grand Teton. Handicapped by his vision, he had lost most of his eyesight to glaucoma. He called a halt. I've been teaching judgment for 60 years, he said. I was afraid if I tried the final pitch, I'd step on a rock that wasn't there. He came back down to the valleys unbowed. In 1991, he died at the age of 91.